Well, I think I first became aware of him in perhaps the late 1980s, um, on a trip to London, actually. But I would say that one would have to be deaf, dumb, blind, or living in a cave for the past 40 years not to know of Lord Foster and his work. I mean, I certainly remember looking from my hotel room and seeing the famous Gherkin, the pickle building in, in London. But I didn't meet Lord Foster per personally until about 2016 or 17, as we were working on our Norton Museum project in Palm Beach, Florida. He is an innovator. He is unafraid, but my sense is that unlike the reputation of many architects, deserved or not deserved, um, he does not put his ego into these projects. I always felt that as a client, he was paying attention to our ambitions for our project. And um, we wanted to preserve what we could of the existing building. And there were some on the board who did not feel that we needed a Norman Foster reimagination, reimagination of our museum. But to me, that would have been like putting lipstick on a pig so to speak, and uh, we did need um, a major leap forward and a different new direction. I think Norman is very respectful of the excellence of the past, but has a very clear direction about where we ought to be moving as a society and as a culture. I'm also very touched that he devoted tremendous time to our Norton project. Uh, Lord Foster has done magnificent buildings all over the world. <laughs> Russia, the Middle East, um, <laughs> uh, you name it, major cities across the globe, including, of course, uh, the Hearst Tower in New York. Um, and for him to take the time and return to Palm Beach many times during the course of this, honestly, small project for him. I think that the only valuable things <laughs> are things that are designed well. It could be the most utilitarian object. For example, uh, the Oldenburg typewriter eraser was actually a uh, pop art manifestation of a very lowly object, of, a, of an eraser that in my school days we had in our pencil boxes. Um, but even that object was based on design that made it appealing to use. Our museum before Norman was a repository of a very fine collection of artworks uh, across a broad spectrum. But the building had no appeal, and you didn't even know where to turn into it. It was not distinguished from its surroundings. Um, what Norman has done for us, what good design does for us, is to make a statement, not to overwhelm the surroundings, but to enhance.